the gavel of God has dropped and he is administering justice to his children. The gavel represents law, legal systems, judges, and more importantly, justice. And in many legal systems of the world, the judges judge between right and wrong, truth and lies, justice and injustice. And the whole goal behind bringing a case before a judge is to settle a dispute between two opposing parties. However, we are all aware that the justice systems of this world, although they may have a heavenly blueprint, many justice systems are corrupt and value money and or bribery over true justice. Because justice is a core value of who God is, he hates injustice. And here are a few scriptures to support this point. Proverbs 11 and 1 says, A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Proverbs 17 and 15 says, He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous, both of them are like an abomination to the Lord. Exodus 23, 6 through 8 says, You shall not pervert the justice due to your needy brother in his dispute. Keep far from a false charge and do not kill the innocent or the righteous, for I will not acquit the guilty. You shall not take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the clear-sighted and subverts the cause of the just. The reason God loves justice is because he loves righteousness, having a right heart and being in right standing with him and those who you come in contact with. So God stands ready to justify all that come to him to settle a dispute. Heaven is the true court system and earth system is only a type and shadow of heaven's court. With this being said, God desires to bring justice to his children. And as his children, we should be seeking justice from him and him alone. We should never try to seek justice on our own because one, we do not have the right or the proper viewpoint to give justice. Because we have all sinned and fallen short of his glory, and we all have a sinful nature, this in itself unjustifies us to make balanced scales of justice. And to go before a holy God, we must be righteous and justified. And the Bible tells us the only way to be righteous is through the way, which is Jesus Christ. Likewise, when we go before the Lord to seek justice on our behalf, we must first repent. The thing of it is, is that we have an accuser, Satan, who loves to remind God of our faults and all that we've done wrong so that he, meaning Satan, will have legal rights and access to destroy us. The enemy only has legal rights to attack you when you are uncovered in unrighteousness. However, if you are under the covering of righteousness, which is the blood of Jesus Christ, he must get permission to test you and or tempt you. And temptations from the adversary only comes to tempt you to lose devotion to God. And the number one commandment is what? Yes, have no other gods before Yahweh. Think about Job chapter one, Satan, the adversary showed up with the angels, or as the Bible says, the sons of God, and Satan was asked about Job, but from the scriptures by the wording, you can see that Satan tried to avoid it because he basically said, Job is upright and perfect. And plus you have a hedge around him. And so you've just been blessing him so much that I've decided not to consider him. But Satan also alluded to if Job didn't have it so good that Job would probably curse God. So the adversary had to get permission to test Job. So Satan went on his quest to try to destroy Job's devotion to God. Because Job remained righteous, everything he lost was restored back to him, doubled what he had before. So if you read the entire book of Job, you will see how the Lord's justice really works, how the legal system of heaven really works. 
We know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities in high places. So when we have a personal battle on the earth with people, we have to know what's really behind it. And yes, it is the adversary, Satan. So we are to not seek justice ourselves or to seek vengeance because the Bible tells us that vengeance is the Lord's and it is his to repay. And we find that in Romans 12, 19, it says, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath for it is written. It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. However, we should be making the plea to God to bring justice to our lives when things were done against us. David constantly, constantly prayed for God to handle his enemies and his foes because they sought to destroy him. Psalms 35 and 1 says, Contend, Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and armor. Arise and come to my aid. Psalms 94, one through two says, the Lord is a God who avenges. O God who avenges, shine forth, rise up, judge the earth, pay back to the proud what they deserve. So I just wanted to share with you what was laid on my heart at the beginning of this year as I was seeking the Lord. Uh, me and my husband, we were speaking with each other, just sharing what the Lord was laying on each of our hearts about the year and what we saw coming for this season. And I shared with him that I believe this year is the Lord's gavel is being dropped, that I could sense that the Lord's justice was being rendered. In my spirit, I sensed that many disputes were being settled and many battles were ending and that God was administering his justice to the righteous and ministering justice to the unrighteous and making the enemy pay back the people of God for all that was lost, stolen, and delayed. So that's why in my last message, I focused on Esther because that's where the Lord kind of led me to speak about the ills of the enemy when he seeks to destroy you. The plans that the enemy made to destroy you will actually be the plans he makes for himself. And the blessings that the enemy has set up for himself will actually be for the person he wanted to destroy. The Lord's gavel has dropped and he is administering justice on behalf of his people. And we must submit to the Lord all the injustices. Every evil plan of destruction or delay must end and the plans of the Lord shall prevail over his people. Remember, you must first repent of your own sin so that when you go before God, that you can go before him justified. And we know that we serve a God who has blotted out our transgressions with the sacrifice of Jesus Christ's blood. Therefore, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we can boldly go to God knowing that he will fully give us grace and forgive us and give us mercy as well as contend on our behalf for healing, for deliverance, for repayment, and for justice just for us. Psalms 34, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I said them all. And if you have faced delays in your life where there seemed to be always something to stop you, to block you from moving forward, anything that has just caused you to buffer and buffer and go in circles, pray that the enemy that has caused delay must submit to God's plan and God's timing and that those powers of delay be broken in Jesus name. And here's a scripture to proclaim over your life. It is Ezekiel 12, 21 through 28. And it says, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man. What is this proverb you have in the land of Israel? The days go by and every vision comes to nothing. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am going to put an end to this proverb and they will no longer quote it in Israel. Say to them, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled for there will be no more false vision or flattery divinations among the people of Israel. But I, the Lord, will speak what I will, and it shall be fulfilled without delay. For in your days, you rebellious people, I will fulfill whatever I say, declares the sovereign Lord. 
the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, the Israelites are saying the vision he sees is for many years from now. And he prophesies about the distant future. Therefore, say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the sovereign Lord. Pray that over your life. And if you have faced stolen things, things that have been stolen from you, we find in Exodus 22, we see how restitution works. Exodus 22 and 7 says, If anyone gives a neighbor silver or goods for safekeeping and they are stolen from the neighbor's house, the thief, if caught, must pay back double. So if the enemy stole from you, pray that God will require him to give back what was lost and in double. The Bible also speaks about a seven times that the enemy has to give back seven times as well in Proverbs 6 and 31. And in the case of loss and destruction, we can look to the entire book of Job. One important thing I want you to note in Job is he did not get repayment until he prayed for his friends, or as some would say, frenemies, because those friends were more like enemies than they were friends. And throughout the story of Job, his friends doubted him and questioned him, assuming surely he had done something wrong and to deserve these calamities and all these things that happened to him. He lost everything. He lost livestock. He lost children. He lost his home. He lost everything. He had boils on his skin. But because of all this, they assumed surely he did something wrong. And they actually sinned against God by placing doubt in Job's mind about his righteousness and they did not speak the truth about God. They had to offer sacrifices to be forgiven for their wrongdoing. And when they had done so, Job prayed for them. And this is what it says in Job 42 and 10. It says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. This, my brothers and sisters, is the justice of God. God's kingdom principles, the whole book of Job, is a book, a wisdom book about the justice system of God. So seek God to bring justice in your life by first repenting and getting justification through Christ. Then go boldly before God, the great and mighty judge, and request him to bring restitution and justice back to your life. Amen. God stands ready to bring restitution to your life when you come repenting before him so that he can cover you and that so that he can go contend with the enemy to give you back everything that was stolen, everything that was lost and everything that was delayed. You be blessed and God will shine his favor upon you. 